Project 12. Today we're going to do November 2018 paper. Question number one. So here it is. Okay, program is here. So there are tabs 1.11234. 1 the first question is. Write code to set the properties of the panel as follows. Background color, font color, font size, and the caption. That's quite simple, grade 10 work. PNL, question one, underscore one dot, color equals, that's background color, okay, in case you didn't know, just the color of the, panel C align and then the size and of what else was there? And then there were three things font color size of the font and the caption. So it's font dot color Font dot size twenty and the caption is our subject. And that must be in inverted commas obviously, because it's a string. Alright, let me put this light on. I've got to see my keyboard. It's better. Right, done. Next one, full marks. Supply of cooling cans was determine the volume of a can for its filled with liquids. You know the base times the height, the area of the base times the height is a volume. They're going to give you the formula anyway. But you would leave a space of one centimeters from the top, so probably have to calculate the volume of that. Declare variables for height and radius, so let's go and do that. Question 1.2 VAR, RH, RR, real. Yeah, let's keep it real. Calculate the volume of the liquid required according to specification to fill the height and the radius of the can. Now that one centimeter cubic, it has to be subtracted. So if you want to fill the can you've got to leave the height there of one centimeter. So what are you going to do with your height? You'll just subtract one from the height. And they give you the formula. Calculate the volume of the liquid to fill the can if the height and the radius can be provided from it by input. Volume is power times radius squared times height. Right, so that, as I said, they give you the the, um, the formula, but you have to know that you're going to subtract one from the height here when you calculate the volume. Of course, you know, you've got to leave a space of one centimeter from the top. So whatever the user types in, in the edit box, which is question 1.2 there, EDT height, you're going to subtract one from there. And you'll get, so we're going to say R, H, which is the height variable, unity height dot text, but of course it's string to float. Can't just say dot text, you've got to say string to float open brackets. And then I'm going to subtract one right there. And then the radius equals the EDT radius dot text. But of course, string to float. Can't forget about converting the string to floating point number. In other words, a real number. Done. Right, that's the height and the rate number. Oh, we've got to calculate the volume. All right, fine. Let's calculate the volume and just to RV for volume. RV will equal to. You know that the circle is part R squared, so. Pi, by the way that works, times by RR 
you can either go square R R or you can say R R times R R. Oops, R R. And then times by the height. So there's your volume. Let's make sure we got our formula correct. Yep. And a dialog box which will be a show message component to display the volume. Show message volume equals plus float to string f or v did they say how many decimal points to round it off well they round yes they do calculate to one decimal place so we can round it or or v v f f fix because it's not money it's not f f currency eight comma one and there's your show message component. Done. Right, next one. That was easy so far. 1.3 factors and check if it is a prime number. Fine. Write code to do the following. Let's first look at our user interface. Just display factors and check if it is a prime number. So obviously people are going to enter their own number somewhere along the line. Um, Clear the rich edit, Declare, generate a random number. Ah, no, we're not going to use a random number from 5 to 50. Display the factors of the random number in the rich edit. If the number generated is a prime number, display the number and indicate that it is a prime number. <coughs> so we've got to do two things. If an, Let's just look at the example. So... Um, if the number generated, in other words, the random number, if it's prime, we're going to, we're going to say that it's prime. So the only number, there's only two factors in a prime number, one in itself. Uh, and we also got to display all the factors, and we're going to count how many factors there are as well. So that's quite simple. So let's go and get our random number, etc., etc. Let's clear the rich edit, generate the random number, and then start the process in this button. Click event 1.3. So V A R R R N integer. Clear the rich edit, generate the RAN number. Already question one underscore three dot clear. And R RAN will be equal to random range open brackets. You must remember that the lowest the highest number must always be one plus. I mean, the, the second parameter of random range is 1 plus the highest value that it must be. 5 to 5, 51, in other words. Because you want random numbers from 5 to 50, so it must be 5, 51. Now, the thing is, we have to go and isolate each of... Well, no, we don't. We just have to see... Uh, we're going to use from we're gonna use a for loop from 1 to that number. So we're just going to use a for loop. For k equals 1 to the number whatever the number is rm which is that random number okay we're going to see if k can go k is going to go for 1 can 1 go into rm can 2 can go into rm can 3 so k is going to go all the way up to 3 and then as soon as we get we're going to actually count factors so i'm going to have a count here our count set that equal to naught so if we can if a number is a factor, we're going to increment, increment this counter. How do we check if a number is a factor? We say if rn mod k equals naught. That's how you check it's a factor. Why? Because if you're trying to in divide k into rn and you don't get a remainder, mod will return the remainder. In other words, mod of that will be naught. That means if you know a remainder, then we can increment our count. We also need to display it in the rich edit. So mm -hmm. we better put begin and end here because you want to do two things. And the rich edit is called red question one underscore three dot lines dot add into to string. What are we putting in? Not rn k. K is going to be all the factors going up to and then from 1 all the way up to whatever our RAN is. So remember the for loop goes from 1 to a number and each time we're going to take that k and check to see if it's going to our RAN without a remainder and that is what this function is doing. Mod returns a remainder after the dividing. 
And if that remainder is naught, then you know that k is a factor of Rn. So there we are. Just remember, k is the factor of the factors. K is the factors of the factors. So that's all we have to do. And now we just have to say if r count is uh, uh, less than or equal to two, then we can say that red question one underscore three dot lines dot add we're displaying that rn it is a prime number rn in other words into string rn the random number we're saying it is a prime number so i think that's all we have to do yeah that's it run the program if you don't believe me just to double check this one it was 1.3 eh? display factors 13 oh, I'll just try another one just happened to go to 13 isn't it 37 oh they're all prime okay that's not prime 10 10 is the number you see 47 is the actual number the random number that was chosen 14 in this case is the random number we're supposed to display the random number but anyway they didn't give it, say that we have to. They just just display the factors. Right. So there we go. Right now, this is the most difficult of all the questions. I'm going to do this one now, which is one point four. Okay. So now, a robot is going to receive a lot of instructions to go through a maze using no more than 10 steps in total. So if there's an S, a step forward, R, turn right, L, turn left. And here's an example of instructions. And there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Ha, ah, but there's 12 there. 10 steps in total, but there's 12 in this one. So that, you know, obviously it's, it's got to stop after 10. Convert the line instructions into capital letters and assign the line instructions to the variable S instructions. And clear the output area. Right, now where's the input coming from? Let's go and look at our screen. Well, we don't have any input. They just say enter line of instructions and display commands. So that means we have to write an input box statement. They don't actually tell us. Okay, they just give an example of of, but basically what's going to happen, the loop has to stop after 10. There's only 10 instructions allowed. Convert the line into capital letters, assign the line of instructions to variable instructions. Okay, fine. Okay. Oh, code has been provided. Okay, okay, cool. I didn't look at the code. Double click the button. Oh, there it is. Input boxes there already. Code provided. That's good. I'm so glad. Sorry about that. So, um... So now we're going to now we're going to um, we're going to go and get this string. Okay, now they've given us a sample string here. There it is. See, I'm spending a bit of time on this one because it's difficult. Let's see. It's counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's still twelve, but we're going to have to stop after ten. Okay. Display the line instruction that's been entered in the output area following. And so they've cleared. And now we're going to display the line of instructions. So we say already question one underscore four dot lines dot add. Add. And we're going to put in your S command. Oops, yes, command line. Okay, so we're adding that. As I said, we must display that line. So I'm going to actually put in a, a blank line here, a blank line after it. I don't think it tells us, they tell us to do that, but this looks prettier. Oh, it does say followed by a blank line. You see that? And you would have missed, if you didn't do that, you would have lost one mark. Okay, now into short, short descriptive commands. So we know S means step forward, R turn right, L turn left. 
So display the description ones which edit as shown an example. As soon as the number step forward exceed oh step forwards. Okay, you can have more than ten instructions, but the step forwards must not be more than ten. Yeah. So we don't we want to stop, you know, the step forwards. A number of step forwards exceeds ten and the and none of the remaining commands in the line of instructions must be decoded. So you can't go more than 10 steps forward. Okay, so in other words, so yeah, if you put this in, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it didn't, there wasn't, there wasn't any exceeding of step forward. So we could put all those in. But in this one, we exceeded 10. So it doesn't matter how many lines of instructions there are, but just only 10 S's in other words. So you've got to count the number of S's that you have. So you can stop. So there's different ways of doing this. So I'm going to do a I count S. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do an I count S. I'm going to set I count S equal to naught. And I'll say while I count S is less than 10. Do. Again, I might, I might change it to less than or equal to 10. Okay. So, we know there are going to be some S's in there, fortunately. Otherwise we'll have a problem. What if there aren't any S's, you know? Uh, because we are counting S's. Uh, the thing is, also, what if there aren't 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7? What if there are um, no S's, then this while loop's not going to work, is it? We have to use a another condition. The n number of characters, a counter for the number of characters in the string. Oops, I count S is supposed to be an integer. Silly me. Okay, I num, and we can make I num for our number of characters. And I num is also going to be incremented. We'll start with naught, and while I num is less than or equal to the length. I don't know whether we're going to use um, equal sign there. We'll go through it just now. S line. You're going to see what we're going to do now. Remember S command line. Sorry, not S line. S command line. So we're going to have two conditions. <clears throat> that the loop will stop if um, one of these becomes false. Just one of them has to be false and then this whole loop will stop. So in other words, if I count is now equal to 10, maybe we'll make it equal here. Eh? Okay, let's do equal. And then we'll start these R num with one. If I count is, actually we need to actually do less than, because you'll see just now what's going to happen. We'll go through it and I'll show you. Right, so while I count S is less than 10 and, because the and is there, if the loop gets to the end of S command line, okay, it'll do the one, it'll do right to the end of S command line, our num will be then equal to the length, then that will be false, the loop will stop. But if I count S goes to 10, find uh, um, less than 10, then we'll find another 10, but as soon as it becomes 10, if I need to put an equal sign on that one, as soon as it is greater than 10, but actually no, we don't want that either, hey, because if we increment our counter, we're actually displaying it, so let's use it less than. In other words, basically, if we have 10 S's, the loop will stop. Or, if we reach to the end of the string, this command line, the loop will stop. So this while, these two conditions will work. So we're going to do the following. We're going to say, we're going to isolate each um, digit, S, S. Inside the loop, we're going to go and display the characters of that long string. Each character, one at a time. Okay, and if it's an S, we're going to display step forward. If it's an L, we're going to say turn left. If it's an R, we're going to say turn right. But if it's an S, we're also going to increment our count S's, not so. Right, so let's go and see what we have to do for each character. Yes, we're going to display 
step forward or turn left or turn right inside our rich edit question 1.4 as in this example there and then we want it to stop but we also want to display number of steps exceeds 10 if we find that happening okay so we're gonna have to do that too right that can be at the end right now we're gonna do this um, you say case is command line of s okay. oh we got an uppercase Ooh. Upcase, let's upcase it now. Better upcase if we don't upcase. Remember, upcase is for characters, and uppercase is for strings. So you could either uppercase the whole S command line or you could just upcase each character at a time. So if it's that, we're going to do a couple of things if it's S, you see. But for the others, we're only going to do one thing display and right is going to be turn right we're going to display turn right so we have to say red question forward lines dot add and then display something step forward increment our counter do we want to display step forward if our count s is greater than 10 so I'm going to put an if statement here if our count because the loop is not going to stop right there if our count s is greater than 10 then oh, less than or equal less than or equal to 10 then we will display but if it's not 10 I mean if it's greater than 10 we're not going to display okay we'll say else um, we'll display the fact that there are um, too many exceed number of steps exceeds number of forward steps I thought I was going to do at the end exceeds we might change that 10 we'll see how this is going to work okay just take note we're doing this all from the beginning without looking at any memos so this one is we're going to display the turn left for L and turn right for R and then we're going to display turn right for R now what's going to happen here if our count, we first find the S, so we increment, it's 1, okay? Then we go through, find another S, it's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If it's 9, it's less than 10, not so. And then we increment, it's 10, okay? So, what's going to happen here? It's 10, and when we go back to the loop and see it's 10, the loop's going to stop. So actually, this instruction here is not necessary. But we'll see how it's going to work, right? Because we can actually put it right outside the loop, but we'll see just now. Remember, this is the end of the case structure. The end case has one end. Always remember that. End of case. Right, let's go through. What if the S's do not exceed 10? And we go right to the end. So I have my less than equal, a less than sign. If I count S becomes 10, then the loop will bomb out after it comes, comes here to the end of the while loop going to go back to that while loop statement process and we'll go and check to see what our count s is and if it's 10 it's going to stop the loop and then we're going to go over here we can go and say if our count s is greater equal than 10 then we can go and put this in you know we can do that but we're going to see if this works inside this loop here now what about the length what if there are nine s's or six s's and then we have to worry about the length i'm just making sure i've got the right I don't have an equal sign there. If I'm, I num is naught. We haven't incremented I num. Not anywhere over here. So we got an issue. Not so. We better increment I num. Increment I num. Because that's our counter. The second condition of our while loop is going to stop when we get to the length of S line. So we increment I num. And that's going to keep the loop going. If I didn't increment I num here, this loop is going to go on forever. Or maybe it will stop over here. Okay, but we do want to go to the end of the loop. No, the loop will, will stop. But the thing is, 
only if i count s goes to 10 but if we do not increment i num over here we have the second condition we've got to make sure it gets increased each time the loop happens so we increment i num over there now it's one then it's two what if the length is 10 um, if it gets to nine okay fine and then 10 okay then it'll do 10 okay the length is 10 so therefore the loop will stop so there we go so what we're going to do is we're going to run the program and use the data provided in this input box statement over there and see how that works. 1.4, enter line of instructions. There it is. Can you see there they are? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 S's. Uh-oh, that didn't do anything, did it? That's not right at all. Step 4, 1, 2, no. So that's completely wrong. Okay, increment i num. Ha. Ah. No wonder. <laughs> because I'm only dealing with the first character. Case, up case, s command line, character i num. No wonder it's not going through the loop. I'm so glad I made that mistake, rookie mistake, you can call it. Yes. So the character number is going to be incremented each time until we get to the length of s command line. Can you see there? I have to put the character number in there. Right, so now let's go and try it now. First it's going to start at 1, 2, 3, so each character is going to go in turn. At that point it was going through the length of, you know, it was just checking the first row the whole time, 10, whatever the length of s command line was. So let's go and do it again. Same string. Click OK. There it is. And that is 100% correct because why? <coughs> it's the same that's the output for that one now let's go and add some things let's add four s's to end end of command line all right let's add up four s's let's put four one two three four add some s's there now this is supposed to have said that um let's go and look at my question it's supposed to have said that it finished number of forward steps exceeds 10 but it didn't display that so my hunch was correct actually we have to go and say number of forward steps exceeds 10 you're going to say it outside that loop so let's go and do that but otherwise everything else is correct Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 so stopped at 10 and there's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 there's actually 11 s's that didn't display the 11th s step forward so that's good so it stopped in the right place all we have to do now is put an if, if statement at the end of the loop and say if just put my semicolon here take this line out of here control x oh, here one. control x and I'm going to ask the question if I count s s is greater than or equal to 10. Even if it's just equal to 10, then we're going to do that. Display. So this is the end of the while loop. And if S goes to um, more than 10, so in other words, if it gets to 10, guys, then the loop will stop. If I count S gets to 10, because it already got to 10 over here. You must remember that the processor checks the counter only at the end here. When it gets to the end here, then the process goes up to the first line and see is our count s equal to 10? Well, if it is incremented here to 10, then the processor goes over here, then it goes zooming up to this condition and checking, oh, our count s is equal to 10. Okay, fine, let's get out of here. So the, the processor skips everything else and goes to this statement right there. So I'm saying if our count s is equal to 10 or greater than equal to 10. I'm just putting that greater than that to cover myself let's go and see then we're going to display the number of steps exceeds 10 and remember we only displayed step forward if our count s is less than or equal to 10 so yeah this was a complicated program and um, many people got stuck with this I'm sure I'm gonna put in four s's here one two three four and I click and there we go now it's given me the, the message like I wanted. Alright, that's the end of that one and tomorrow we'll do question two.